Understanding INCO terms is a vital part of international trade. When exporting products overseas, you must agree to sell your goods based on 11 INCO terms. INCO terms is short for International Commercial Terms, which are published by the International Chamber of Commerce and relate to international commercial law. They are accepted by governments and legal authorities around the world. Put simply, INCO terms are the selling terms the buyer and seller of goods both agree to before shipping the goods. The INCO terms clearly state which tasks, costs and risks are associated with the buyer and which are associated with the seller. The INCO term states when the seller's costs and risks are transferred onto the buyer. We've put together this simple chart to display INCO terms in an easy to understand format. At the top are the different types of INCO terms beginning from left to right. On the left side is the exporter or the seller of the goods, beginning at the seller's location or warehouse. As you move along to the right, the products leave the warehouse, get loaded on board a vessel at the port of loading, get shipped through to the port of destination, get customs cleared, and then delivered further through to the buyer's location. Along the way, there are set INCO terms to establish which risks and costs are agreed to be paid by the seller and which are to be transferred to the buyer. On the left is the first INCO term, EXW, which means X Works or X Warehouse. If the buyer and seller agree to sell goods on X Works terms, then the seller's obligation is very simple. The seller will only cover the cost of the goods X Warehouse. So that means the seller will manufacture the goods, have them packaged and ready for collection from their warehouse. From then on, all additional costs and risks involved in transport away from the warehouse is covered by the buyer. Moving further along the supply chain, there are FCA, FAS and FOB INCO terms. These three terms are quite similar, but the most popular INCO term used is FOB, free on board. When FOB terms are agreed upon, then the seller's obligation is to supply the goods and also to pay for all additional charges to get the goods loaded on board the vessel for export. So the seller will cover all loading charges, inland freight charges to the port, origin port handling charges, export customs clearance and origin forwarder fees. As soon as the goods are loaded on board the vessel, all further associated costs and risks are transferred onto the buyer. The buyer will pay for the sea freight and all charges thereafter. If the seller agrees to pay for the sea freight, then they can choose to sell the goods on CFR, CIF, CPT or CIP INCO terms. These are all quite similar terms. CFR and CPT are very similar where the seller will agree to pay for the sea freight to ship the goods to the port of destination. If they agree to sell on CIF or CIP terms, then the seller will agree to pay the sea freight and the marine insurance cost to ship the goods to the port of destination. Moving further along, the seller can also agree to pay for the local charges associated at the port of destination, including port charges, import customs clearance, local import duties and taxes payable on the goods to import. It's not as common for a seller to ship on DAT, DAP or DDP terms, but this can also be arranged. If you have any detailed questions relating to INCO terms, you should refer to your freight forwarder.